Uh, I suppose I'll start off this video with uh, my own apology here that I'm not going to be doing the weekly Kickstarter video this week. Uh, mainly because there hasn't been a project that really stands out as something that I wanted to look at. Uh, and it's just been kind of a quiet couple of weeks, and it's uh, the projects that exist in the Kickstarter backlog, so to speak, right now, they're just not that entertaining to me. On top of that, this uh, video that I'm doing right now is sort of something that I've wanted to do for a little bit of a little while now, for, for reasons that I will explain. And uh, right now it just seemed like the best sort of opportunity to, to, to do this video. Because of the way social media internet has been structured for the last several years and nearly a dec decade now, we've gotten to the point where certain topics and commentary that we want to discuss is not given the proper time to sort of ferment and for all the information to come out, especially when it comes to cases of serious accusations of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and more. My camera was slightly wonk. It, seem, it sort of seems like it's almost on a weekly basis at this point that content creators get uh, accusations thrown at them for different reasons, and it, it, when I say that, I don't want to imply that these accusations aren't uh, legitimate, uh, that there isn't reason concern, and that there isn't a reason to uh, like investigate these problems. It's just that uh, far too often, there is no investigation, it's just sort of an accusation, followed by taking sides. Either you support this person wholeheartedly and don't believe a single accusation and want to excuse every single thing that they have done, for whatever reason, or the opposite, where you don't like this person and you don't like their content or whatever and you want to take the exact opposite side, and uh, far too frequently, even when the person in question is genuinely a horrible person and has done horrible things and and, and is, uh, it's worth accusing them of certain things and investigating them. For some reason, the other person on the other side is sort of ends up helming this, this cause, so to speak, ends up being an asshole themselves, and you're sort of stuck in a rock in a hard place if you want to take sides at all, which is why I quite often don't. And the other reason I don't take these uh, sides quite often is that, well, I simply don't have all the information, and a lot of people don't have the information, but they still feel the need to take sides. And I understand why that is, it's just the speed, the rapid speed at which we have all these new situations thrown at us online, and it's, it, like I said, it's on a weekly basis, and the end result is that we just don't have time to think about these issues. It's like everyone online, because there's these conversations are being held by other content creators that are constantly trying to pump out new content that they need to talk about, that they need to bring in attention, that they need to bring in views, and, of course, bring in revenue, the end result is that it's never given enough time to ferment, not enough time to give, uh, get all the information, just gotta keep going, you gotta keep going, you gotta get the next, next big thing. We had, uh, just like maybe a month ago, that the whole uh, dream situation was sort of wrapping up, but uh, then, just a couple of weeks after that, pretty much, we had uh, the situation with Vosh, and where he got caught uh, with a picture of a lolly getting destroyed by a horse cock for, in a folder full of full of horse cock. I mean, who hasn't had that happen to them fellas, am I right? But we can't focus on that, on that too much because like, oh, hold on, uh, two mad just died, two mad just died, we need to talk about how, how two mad is actually like a creep and weirdo uh, after his death and, and we need to uh, talk about it right now. Don't wait for more evidence to come in, just, just keep talking, just talk right now. Oh, so, uh, hold on, hold that thought. Uh, too mad is no longer relevant, uh, a week has passed, we need to talk about something else. I know the Rooster Teeth has closed their doors and people are bringing up stuff about Rooster Teeth again, which I'm admittedly doing as well, but I have my own reasons for doing this and I'm gonna be talking about very specific things. It's like, every single week there's something that needs to be talked about, and every single week, whatever we were talking about last week is getting thrown in the fucking bin. If you're going to be talking about Vosh a month from now and about the horsecock thing, you, you, what the hell are you doing? You're, you're such a weirdo for still talking about that. We're currently talking about how... We're all currently talking about how Markiplier ate a baby. Like, why are you even talking about Vosh anymore? Come on, get with the times. I despise that. I do not want to rapid-fire out content while I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. I do want to comment on things, but I want to comment, uh, comment on them at my own pace. Uh, I've been using the second channel uh, uh, with my Minecraft uh, series there to basically ramble about things I have on my mind, but uh, for more, I guess, focused topics, I would prefer to do something like this.
I'm still workshopping a title for this, uh, like, series. I call it a series, but not quite. It's just something that might occasionally show up on a channel when there's something I want to talk about. But I, I want to focus on the hindsight. I want to talk about things that are sort of long past, in a way, but people were so adamant about this topic and talking about it so much and discussing it so much, and then after some time, it just sort of has faded away, but at the same time, now would be almost the best time to talk about it because now we have all that hindsight, we have all this information about it now, why not talk about it fucking now? And of course, I am going to be talking quite a lot about YouTube drama, I suppose, but again, I much prefer to talk about it when we're not in the middle of that fucking drama, I'm not Keemstar. And... I felt there was no real better way to have an opener for something like this than to talk about an example uh, that sort of illustrates that I have been burned on this sort of thing myself. That I have myself uh, closely followed a channel and content creators and then and sided with, against or with them, and, and this is the case with a content creator uh, after something has come out about them, um, only to, after some time, have to go back and look at everything I said and did and what I supported and go, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have paid more attention to what these other people were saying, especially considering that the other people were also content creators that I also followed and I also respected. Let's start by talking about Rooster Teeth and the fact that after over 20 years, they have shut their doors and, you know, have completely gone bankrupt and are just gone, liquidated. I've sort of seen two groups of people chiming in about this. I have seen a couple of uh, rifts and peas bozos about it, I've seen a couple of people sort of cheering and sneering a little bit and saying, oh man, this has been a long time coming, I'm so glad they're gone. Um, and I've also seen uh, the other side, including a channel I really uh, respect and follow a lot, which is Internet Today, reporting on it sort of as a, oh, what a horrible thing this is, they have so much history, which of course they do, they brought so many good memories, which of course they did, this is all a result of this corporate greed and, and acquisitions that ended up uh, putting them at the hands of Warner Brothers, and then, you know, all that culminating in essentially these people reporting on it going, DAMN YOU as LOVE! But I do think that's a bit disingenuous as well. Because to report it in that way is to ignore all the issues that were present with Rooster Teeth for as long as it has existed as a standalone genuine company to ignore the fact that their HR department by this point is no has been notoriously horrible at dealing with internal issues, and there are some prime examples that sort of just illustrate this very well. The most, like, heinous example actually might be the uh, story of Caden Jensen, who worked there, but uh, that's a perhaps a story for another day, because... Uh, it's it's not quite what I want to illustrate today, but it's still quite well known that there was abuse and uh, all kinds of horrible things going on at Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter and elsewhere that the uh, HR department at Rooster Teeth just never bothered to tackle because they're the content creators were their darlings, the on-screen personalities that were their darlings that they just couldn't punish in any meaningful way because well, at that point, they might be tarnishing their own reputation, the reputation of the company, so they just tucked everything aside, swept it under the rug, and hid it from people. Which is where we get to the topic I want to talk about today, the topic that brings up how I, myself, was burned out on a content creator that I wanted to defend. In the distant year... In the past distant year of 2020, late in 2020, uh, there was a double controversy that struck Rooster Teeth. Now, they weren't controversy-free before, but by this point, this was pretty much definitely the worst one they had faced up until this point. Not even the horrible crunch conditions in their animation department came close. Because it came out at the same time that uh, two employees at Rooster Teeth would be fired uh, 
effective immediately due to inappropriate behavior at the workplace and elsewhere. Um, and one of these people was Ryan Haywood and the other person was Adam Kovic. Now, without getting into too many specific details of what was going on with these two people, uh, I'll start with uh, Ryan Haywood and say uh, his case, whatever else was going on, whatever else has happened since, whatever else has come out since, his case is still far more heinous. Uh, Haywood, uh, Ryan Haywood was a member of Chiman Hunter, the sort of the sort of video game recording, let's play gaming content branch of Rooster Teeth, uh, and he had been in content for years and years at this point. He had started out as an intern doing technical stuff and then moved on to content. And what had come out about him was that for many years at this point, he had been uh, sexting with certain underage fans, grooming them, uh, having sexual encounters with them. Uh, at conventions and after conventions, according to certain allegations, straight up uh, being a racist, doing all of these things while married and having children back at home. Uh, there's a now deleted Rooster Teeth animated adventure uh, that shows a discussion from one of their podcasts where he desperately tries to explain why he was late for a plane and uh, it's it's now very obvious that what was going on was that he missed this flight because he was at this time having an affair with a fan after a convention. Um, and one of the most morbidly hilarious things about it is if you look in the comments, you see people make a great point where he is very clearly lying in this, and people can tell he's lying in the same room as 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 the him because he's doing the same voice he does in, like, Trouble and Terrorist Town videos when he's bullshitting. He gets loud and he gets angry and he gets aggressive. I don't know! It just said you're checked in, but I can't give well, you the barcode! Well, why are you yelling at me? I didn't know. <laughs> so, to cut it very short, Ryan Haywood is a horrible, horrible person who did horrible, horrible things. Now, at the same time, there was a sort of second controversy going on, one with Adam Kovic from Funhouse. Uh, Funhouse was formerly Inside Gaming under Machinima, but after they left Machinima, they joined Rooster Teeth and uh, became Funhouse, uh, with the core cast at the time being uh, Adam Kovic, Lawrence Sontag, James Willems, Bruce Green, Sean Poole, and Matt Peak. And Joel Rubin, who Internet Today has pointed out, has worked at every single company on the fucking face of the earth. What Adam Kovic was accused of at the time paled in comparison to what Ryan was being accused of. Kovic had essentially been catfished by someone on the internet, uh, a man who pretended to be a woman interested in him, uh, and uh, this person had uh, convinced Adam to take photos and record himself uh, masturbating at the office and doing some kinds of other things. And uh, these pictures were then leaked. Uh, there was also the fact that he had recorded himself having sex with his wife and sent it to this person. That's sort of the information we got at the time. And that's basically it. He was then fired. I'm going to start off by saying the following. The responses internally that we received about these two people were also very different at the time, and when you looked at what accusations were levied against one person and then the other person, it sort of made sense. Essentially, in the case of Ryan Haywood, nobody really held back. Everyone was very vocal about what a piece of shit he was, that he was a liar, a monster. Uh, Jack Patillo and uh, Michael Jones, his co-workers and, well, former friends at the time, had uh, this uh, open, very open um, session they, they, they posted online where they were talking about this and you can see just how fucking devastated they were, how they themselves were tricked and how guilty they felt for not having seen this coming and not knowing that, in their own words, they were sitting next to this monster for years at a time. No one was cutting back. Then you look at Adam Kovic's situation, where we kind of got nothing, except very vague statements and tweets from people, a lot of whom had not been working at Rooster Teeth for some time now, or had never worked there in 
the first place, like Raul Coley. There were tweets from Lawrence Sontang and Alana Pierce as well, and at the time, these vague messages of, oh, there's more stuff, but you can't really know about it, like, it annoyed me, but in hindsight, it becomes more and more apparent that this was something that they couldn't disclose at the time. They couldn't say anymore, they had signed non-disclosure agreements, they would be in breach of them to talk about anything else, uh, that, that this was, again, an HR thing. But I was upset at the time, because, well, there was no defending Ryan Haywood. That was absolutely clear. Uh, there was so much content I could no longer watch, and of course I still can't watch anymore, uh, from Achievement Hunter, despite how important Achievement Hunter and Rooster Teeth had been for me growing up. I had been a fan of Rooster Teeth since I was basically, like, 11 years old. I had been... I had watched Ruby since volume one, since the first trailers actually came out. I had watched Achievement Hunter for at least as long. I had sort of been there when Ryan Haywood started appearing in content for the first time. And all of that sort of just really fucking stung. It sucked. It felt like a massive betrayal. So at the time, to contrast it with Kovic's situation, where, by the way, people were sort of mixing things up uh, because this controversy popped off, like both of them happened quite at the same time. Uh, there were people throwing the same accusations towards Kovic as Ryan because they had things mixed up. Um, and, and that sort of also helped along the way I felt about the situation, that I felt, oh, this is kind of, it's, it's a bit too much. I, clearly this man needs like help, he needs mental assistance but I'm not going to feel horrible about re-watching old Funhouse content, I'm not going to stop supporting him if he ever shows up again, which he later would. Now, mind you, Ryan Haywood also tried to come back on Twitch, but uh, he did not have a lot of success. Apparently, even on Twitch, there isn't a huge demand for actual literal racists trying to make content. Who the fucking thunk, right? But Adam Kovic took longer than that. There was basically about half a year, I want to say, before he showed up again. Um, I don't really remember how I saw this happening, I think it was posted on Reddit, but he and Aaron Marquis, another former Rooster Teeth employee, had formed this uh, channel called Null and Void, Null Plus Void, and uh, had written a book together titled Rook. You can still find the book somewhere on Amazon, probably. Although, as far as I know, the channel has been completely scrubbed from the internet. But essentially, they had uh, take, gotten this uh, shitty old house in California that they had uh, bought, and they were doing a podcast from it, they were talking about their book, they were talking about their history at Rooster Teeth, about mental health, about legacy, all kinds of interesting, fairly interesting things. And it was an enjoyable podcast, and I supported it at the time. Again, I still wanted to support Adam Kovic. And I did so. Uh, I even joined their Patreon at the time, uh, where I also heard a bit of the audiobook that Adam had been uh, recording of Rook. Uh, listened to some of it. I was enjoying the book as well. Um, they had some wonderful insights. This was at the time when I was working as a janitor, and so podcasts were a pretty uh, huge part of my daily routine. It at this point became Null, Null and Void, uh, Super Mega Podcast, uh, and uh, Cold Ones that, you know, helped me get through the day. Uh, oh, and the Snark Tank Podcast, like, of course. Uh, after some time, though, I had to abandon the Patreon because I just had a different financial situation at the time. I didn't even have those couple of bucks I really wanted to throw at them anymore, sadly, and I thought, well, at some point I'm going to resubscribe and listen to the rest of the audiobook and all that. Um, then at some point, uh, I didn't really notice because I hadn't noticed the regular upload schedule for the podcast episodes, but the podcast episodes stopped. There were no more uploads on the channel, and I thought, well, that's odd that I hadn't noticed anything, but I didn't even look up the channel at the time, I just thought, well, eventually they'll upload again. Well, I was wrong. Because uh, after some time, there was a discussion on Discord I was on that was talking about the Kane and Jensen stuff that had just come out, and uh, the topic of Haywood and Kovic were brought up, and I sort of offhandedly mentioned, well, I think the Kovic stuff, uh, you know, it's been exaggerated, he wasn't that bad of a person, and so on, and the person I was talking to went, uh, no, actually, there was confirmation. 
about a lot of horrible things. And I once could you have a source, and they did, and it was true. There were accusations and comments made by people who, well, essentially by people who definitely still had skin in the game, who could still stand to lose things if these were all like false statements or something uh, about how Kovic had actually been a creep and a weirdo and a predator and uh, like a, a sexual deviant for years at this point. After Funhouse moved over to Rooster Teeth, how uh, he would be creepy towards interns and make sexual remarks and just be a very uncomfortable person to be around and how this sexual deviancy stuff and jerking off at the office and things probably had been going for a lot longer than this, than, than previously thought, and how this had all been reported to HR, I believe by Bruce Green even, but they did nothing. Why did they do nothing? Kovic's an on-screen personality at the time, they couldn't fucking afford to do it, which sort of, of course, brings up uh, the question of, well, if the Ryan Haywood stuff had been brought to HR first, would they have done anything about that? Because they sure as hell didn't do anything about Kovic, and they didn't do anything about the Caden Jensen situation. And so I had to look back on the support I had provided for Kovic at the time, not the financial support, like, fucking, what, 25 bucks maybe overall, at most, and, uh, but, but the comments I had made at the time to people, like, okay, maybe it's not that bad what he's done, we don't really know anything, I hate how everything's being, everyone's being so vague, why can't they just tell things the way they are, and I obviously should have known better that the people working at Rooster Teeth couldn't say all the details of why you shouldn't support Adam Kovic anymore because they would be breaking NDAs and they would be getting in deep shit themselves. But those are all opinions I could only form literally like a year or more after the first events sort of took place that we know knew about. Like, at the beginning, there was no information whatsoever to go off of. There was fucking nothing. There were no official statements put out by his co-workers at a time, only vague messages, there was nothing in defense or support or uh, really condemning him at the time, so the safest path would, have, path would have been to just not form an opinion, but I felt strong enough that I needed to do so, even though I knew jack shit. That's not to say that this is like a huge regret, if for some fucked reason I had supported uh, Ryan Haywood instead, yeah, that would be a huge regret, but here I, I just feel kind of uh, shitty and it sort of takes away from some uh, like sadness about Rooster Teeth going away because they, they were basically at fault for this more than me at this point. I hope this hasn't been too much of a rambling rant and rave session, uh, that's not really the intention here, I do want to be somewhat coherent in the video like this, uh, if you want more incoherent rambling, again, check out the second channel in the Minecraft Let's Plays that I do want to continue at this point, where I do ramble quite more, uh, quite a lot more, and, um, yeah, I, I don't know uh, when I might be doing a next video, uh, I also need to figure out what exactly I want to talk about, what situation, which, which sort of YouTuber drama I want to talk about, right? Because uh, this one just had to be first. I had to come out and say I had been wrong in a situation like this before, which is why I feel like people need to be more careful when taking sides for the better or for worse. I mean, just as, as a side note, I have also been on the side of accusing people and accepting evidence and accus accusations that I was not in a place to accept and, and support, uh, that later turned out to be wrong. The, a lot of people uh, were in this camp during the pro Jared situation, I feel like, uh, because, well, he was a weird-looking dude and was accused of doing uh, things that a weird-looking dude might do, and then it turned out that it's only, like, half true, but has, it's a big... There's a big gap between something being true and being half true. My nose is fucking itchy.